Hello friends, welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. When we learn a tool in Six Sigma, we should also learn its application in professional world. Most of the people think that Six Sigma tools can be used in Six Sigma projects only. Today, I am going to talk about the application of one such tool in day-to-day -day work in industry, and that tool is Gauge RNR. In a BPO or a service industry, when a person moves from transitioning a process to a quality check team, most of the times the selection is based on number of years the person has spent in transactioning the processes, which is not a bad criteria to select, but one must also conduct gauge r, &R. QC person should be repeatable, reproducible and accurate. If there is a third party for which the business is supporting, then the alignment of the QC resource with the client should be checked first. Gage r, r can help you check all these things. Before we move ahead, let us learn some of the critical aspects that are to be checked in Gage r, r First one is called repeatability. What is repeatability? Variation when one person repeatedly measures the same unit with the same measuring equipment. Let me explain repeatability in simple terms. Suppose I say one transaction is the correct transaction today. After 15 days also, I should be able to repeat myself. I should be able to say the same thing about that transaction, which I checked today. The second thing is reproducibility. It is the variation when two or more people measure the same unit with the same measuring equipment. For example, I checked one transaction and I said it is a correct transaction. The other person should also check the same transaction and say the same thing about the transaction then we both are reproducible. Third and the most important thing is accuracy. The difference between the observed transactions measured and with the standard. If the transaction is a correct transaction, then only QC1 and QC2 resources should say it is a correct transaction. Then only the gauge passes. So let us learn how to perform this gauge r, &R. Suppose there is a team of three quality resources. Step number one, take out 20 unique transactions and ask the QC resource to provide the response on a sheet of paper. I know you must be thinking that in today's world, I am asking you to use paper and a pen. I'll tell you the reason. If you use laptop or a computer to record the results, then for repeatability, you ask the team to repeat the activity or the step for same 20 transactions after 15 days. They can copy paste the response and send it to you. So use paper. After 15 days, ask them to check again. Then get the response of the client on the same 20 transactions and treat that as a standard response. Then conduct gauge r, &R and see for yourself which QC resource needs coaching in which type of area. If the gauge fails, then you should know the alignment of the QC team is not proper with the client. Repeat this activity till the time gauge passes. Now I will take you to Minitab and we will learn how to perform attribute gauge r, &R for this kind of a scenario. So I have captured gauge r, &R data in Minitab. The data in column C1 is QC1 trial 1, in C2 QC2 trial 1, in C3 QC3 trial 1 and likewise the trial 2 data is in column C4, C5, C6 and in column C7 I have standard or the client response on the 20 transactions. You can see yourself some of the transactions are correct transactions marked by everyone. Some of the transactions are incorrect marked by everyone. And in some places, customer thinks that it is incorrect, but the quality team thinks that it is correct. See transaction number 12. The quality team thinks it is correct, but the customer thinks it is incorrect. So let us see how Gage r, &R helps you identify these variations. We would be using attribute agreement analysis and path for that is Stat, Quality Tools, Attribute Agreement Analysis. Go to multiple columns and select both the trials of QC1 together and the next one is for QC2 and QC3. In the number of appraisers, we have three appraisers and in number of trials, we had two trials. You can write down the name of the appraisers if you want.
Under known standard or attribute, you select column C7, which is standard or client response. And click OK. So let us start looking at this table. The first one is within appraiser. Within appraiser is repeatability. Appraiser A is able to repeat 19 transactions. One time he has defaulted. Appraiser B was able to match all the 20 transactions and appraiser C was only able to match 19 transactions in both the trials. Let us move ahead and understand each appraiser versus standard. Each appraiser versus standard is their individual accuracy with the customer. Appraiser A has 18 out of 20. Appraiser B had 19 out of 20. And appraiser C had 18 out of 20. So 18 times only appraiser C could match with the customer. There are two transactions on which appraiser C had disagreement with the customer. Between appraiser is reproducibility. All the appraisers were able to match each other 18 times out of 20. So this is the overall gauge value which suggests whether the gauge is pass or fail. Inspected transactions were 20 out of which 17 matched. So the gauge percentage is 85% which means the gauge has failed. The gauge value should be 90% or above to pass the gauge. So the role of the manager starts here. The manager has to come and check where are these three disagreements and based on these three agreements, a training or a coaching plan should be provided to the appraisers. So let us see where are these three disagreements. Number one disagreement is on column 17 where trial two of QC1 says it is incorrect. In the first trial, the person has said it is correct. But in the second trial, the person is saying it is incorrect, which means there is a problem in repeatability. So this person need to be coached on these type of transactions, which is transaction number 17. In transaction number 18, QC3 in the first trial has said it is incorrect. But in the second trial, after looking at the transaction again, the person said it is correct. This is also a repeatability issue. And it is also a reproducibility issue as well with the other quality resources. The other quality resources think it is a correct transaction, but QC3 in the first trial thought that it is incorrect transaction. So it is repeatability as well as reproducibility issue. And in the last one, transaction number 12, all the quality resources think that it is a correct transaction, but the customer thinks it is incorrect. So this is an accuracy issue. So all these three transactions, transaction number 12, 17 and 18, people need to be coached. And once the people are coached, the gauge is done again on some different 20 transactions. And when once the gauge is passed, then only we can say that this team is calibrated with the end customer. So friends, I hope you would have learned the application of gauge RNR in real world. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next upcoming video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.